Right, it's going to be a pretty niche video, but I thought it was actually quite an interesting one. So racing in the UK is pretty cooked for a number of reasons. Um, basically, everyone's saying it's getting worse. British Cycling decided they want to try and address this problem, and they got together a task force to look at this. Now, this is their initial analysis. Some good points, some clueless points. Let's get into it. So <clears throat> we used to have like six or seven Conti teams in the UK. There's now one Conti team who, I mean, I can't be too harsh, but they are kind of an interesting continental team, to put it like that, uh, with no bike sponsor. But anyway, it's it's not a good scene, uh, for sure. So National Road Series cameras reduced, classic. There used to be way more races. Now for the men's side, four races, women's maybe five. Um, they're all, there's no stage races in the UK at a national level, only at like a clo like open road level, like Nat B, but not the highest level. Um, and yeah, they're also almost all in the north. Um, it's also an important pathway. I don't think it is an important pathway. It's never been an important pathway. I really can't think of many people racing uh, exclusively in the National Road Series and going uh, World Tour, Matt Holmes, Jack Rook and Gray, Connor Swift. That's really it. People don't go pro in the UK. So that's that's important. But I do think this is a good point that people, it should be a good series for people who don't want to become professional bike riders. Here's some of the stats. 41% decline in entries from road races 2013 to 2019. That is significant. Uh, like, that is big. So, um, yeah, that is not not good signs. But people like to do crits. That's a bad sign, in my opinion, because crits are kind of lame. Uh, but that's just based on my own prejudice. Maybe it's not bad for the sport. But I think if you want to become a professional road racer or increase road racing, having more crits is not good. But I think it goes to show... People want to do crits because they're safe and you don't have cars driving at you. Um, there's been an increase of 3% in the average number of entries to all races. Okay, that kind of I don't really understand because I assume this is at a national level because most road races in the UK don't have that many entries. So maybe that's going to show there is demand, but there's not as many races. Um, the elite racing, yeah, um, the number of quantity teams has diminished. There's no point in being an elite development team. If you're not in the UK, an EDT is like a team an amateur team that's not Conti that gets like better entry to national series, but you basically spend loads of money to gain not much back. The team I manage, Bim Bam, are not an EDT because I don't think there's any point doing that. Um, this is a good point. Many people just go to Europe straight away. So domestic pathway, less important, I agree. But that doesn't really change anything. That's just a point, I guess. That's that observation, isn't it? That, that's actually, yeah, fair enough. I've answered my own question. Um, Ethnic diversity in the sport, yeah, I mean that's just not good. <laughs> I, I, that's just not good. I think we can all, we can everyone can say that. Um, cost to attend races are rising. I'd like to see some statistics with that to be honest, because the statistics they're gonna pull out later are chat. So commercial, the global economy is having issues. I agree, but there were issues in two thousand and eight, and I don't think everyone just stopped sponsoring Conti teams. So I think it's bigger than that. There's rising costs. There's always rising costs. Since I've been alive, we've always had inflation. So again, it's like, I, I figures would be interesting. You know, just saying there's rising costs. Well, yes, every year things increase in price. So that is a not a great statement. Um, varying levels of audience reach. Higher profile UCI rakers make it difficult to make new commercial sponsorship. But that's always been the case. You know, national roads racing has never been at a UCI level. There used to be, there was one UCI race in the UK. There was two or three at one point, but it's never been a high level. So that's not a change. Um, so yeah, I don't understand that. So data insights, um, there's limited inf information about commercial sponsorship. Okay, understandable. Um, British Cycling investing significant amounts of money, but it's, it's confidential. So again, that's kind of like, well, I'm giving you loads of money, trust. It's like, okay, how much money are you giving? Oh, we can't say. It's like, well... As people who are members of BC, it'd be pretty useful if you could actually figure that out. But anyway, we move on. Uh, BC, pat on the back because they have a national champs. It's like, come on, mate. Every country has national champs. Like, that's just not impressive. Like, most countries have a separate under-23 national champs, including, like, Uzbekistan. And, like, if we can't, if Uzbekistan can do that and we can't, I don't think that's a great thing to really be boasting about the national champs. That's, like, a bare minimum. And I know you might say you're being very critical here. And I was like, well, I kind of am. But the UK is like one of the best in cycling in the world. So I do feel like we should have some higher expectations of our governing body than to literally organise national champs.
Because people said that before. They're like, oh, at least we have national champs. Like, well, come on, mate. Everyone has a national champs. Um, the observations, the big, the current economic environment makes it challenge to secure big ticket sponsors. Yeah, I just, I'm not. Anyway, we'll move on. There's no data. It's limiting. It's making it a challenge selling in the current economic environment. Again, we just, we, we're going around in circles here. Local authorities experience significant budget ch challenges. True, but didn't they also have massive budget challenges in 2010 when there was huge council cuts across the, the board? Yes. So again, it's interesting. The nature of events is, yeah, but again, we're, we're still, we're missing the big elephant in the room, which is social media, and there's been zero mention of it so far. And I do think that's the biggest issue with the UK scene, but I'm going to mention that at the end. Um, how can we change the races? Okay, that's a good point. And Seattle in America very different style and maybe it is you know uh getting normal people the sport needs to attract new younger and diverse audience how can content be created yes finally social media that is key and without social media cycling is cooked everywhere like you just need to crack it out um majority of media coverage on the domestic scene is not coordinated and can be inconsistent yes uh broadcast and streaming costs can be prohibitive again i just don't understand this I did a race in Mauritius and they literally had a guy on the back of a motorbike with a phone on a gimbal streaming on 4G. It can't be that hard, surely. I'll go on the back of the motorbike because I don't run a race, national race, because I get punted. I will do that for free. Like, it really can't be that hard. And I'll do live commentary. Like, the stuff like this just cracks me. It's like, you have motorbikes, how much money does it cost to have someone? And you might go, oh, there's not 4G. Okay, fine, maybe, but... It's the fact there's no even, like, interest in streaming it. And that is an issue uh, that I think people don't seem to think, oh, well, unless it's, like, you know, 1080p in, on a film, then, you know, we're not going to film it. But ultimately, that is fine. Um, what would have the biggest impact on the domestic race and to grow the profile? Um, well, again, social media. Um, and then, yeah, this is interesting. Many teams lack the financial resources to coordinate publicity and social media channels. No, that's just laziness. I have, a, I have a team and the amount of social media we create is directly proportional to my willingness to do it. And I do think, okay, you're asking a lot of people who manage these teams, but it doesn't cost that much money to film some stuff and crack out a reel every time you race. And you can look at Bim Bam and we have zero social media and that's 100% my fault. I'm not going around in circles, but I don't, I don't agree with this. I don't think that is something that makes sense. Can anything done to support the team throughout the boom bust cycles of annual sponsorship renewal? No, because that's the way cycling is. And you just kind of have to get used to it and hope um, that you're not going to have that if you make better content. Um, National Road Series has reduced. Uh, yes, it has. The Canada Elite Domestic Cycling needs to be spread around the country. I agree. Uh, this is a good point. We need to have that. How we have that is difficult and it is money again. And it would also be nice if it was a pathway. Unfortunately, it's not. This is the kind of interesting thing we're getting towards the end of it. There's been a decline of 54% of the number of road races um, when comparing. So I don't, this is, must be a national level. Again, 35 to 16, which is mad because that is actually bananas how much decrease there has been um, in these. There's been a growth in this number of circuit races. So again, you can see like at a national level, people do like this. I do think though a national level is always questionable to me because I do think national level in the UK is weird because like at the moment, most races that are at national level, the way it's ranked in the UK is the top ranked Nat A races are closed road, Nat B are just like normal races. But those are national races because there are no Nat A's. And the, like, I think it would be interesting to have statistics on that. There's been a 12% uh, cost. Okay, that is just irrelevant. A 12% increase in cost. Inflation this year has been 12%. So since 2019, that's actually not that bad going. Um, and you might say, oh you know, you're in a privileged position, but like four quid is not the reason why people aren't racing. Like, I don't want to be rude, but it, it really isn't. There's a lot of other th costs that are increasing, but the, the the cost of races, I do not think is significant. And if anything, I guess that they're not saying it's significant, but I do think that is actually not a massive issue. Um, so then the questions, observations, what's the optimal calendar? Um, what events do we need? Well, where can we deliver them again? can we align better regional things all these are questions that no one's really going to say can we identify new hosts um can legacy courses be revitalized um and then you know how can we reduce costs which is fair enough um so initial observations it's an okay document i think they got some parts that i'd say is good 
social media in the UK is kind of useless. I don't think any team does it well. Um, and that's kind of the biggest thing. But it's survival of the fittest. If teams don't do social media, they won't get sponsors and then people won't actually want to invest. So that is ultimately the thing is like, if you want to have a UK domestic scene, it's all social media. And when people get up and start realizing that they won't have a team without social media, um, people will stop. Then eventually people will do good social media and cycling will get back to being pretty successful. Um, and then, yeah, I think the other thing is just like the races you have need to be streamed and like you just need to, you know, get someone to go on the back of a motorbike with a video and film it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be unreal. If you just film it, people will watch it. Tour and Mauritius is getting big videos and that Mauritius has a way smaller cycling culture than the UK. So I do think there's some simple things that can be done to increase viewership. Um, but yeah, I think generally at least the document is like starting to realize what the issues are. I just think some of the stuff they're kind of highlighting is not that useful. And I think the main issue, if we talk about the high elite level in the UK is all about exposure and people just need to crack out social media um, in order to get sponsors. Uh, from my own perspective, Bim Bam have got a decent budget yet next year um, again, which is nice. Uh, so for me, it's not a massive issue. And also I did Bim Bam don't race really in the UK. They mainly do what well, we did one new side last year um, and then just amateur races, which are not national level. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this kind of rant slash video um, and I'll see you in the next one.